Hey guys, Josh here. So today I wanted to talk about being an undergraduate teaching assistant. Now being a, being a UTA at a university is a lot of fun. It looks great on a CV. Um, you can definitely um, you get to experience the different or the other side of what academia would be like. So I was used to always being in class, going to these labs, and you know just seeing you know just one side of it but being a UTA it really opens your eyes gives you a very good perspective of what things are like um, as a teacher's standpoint I guess you could say and uh, so I'm gonna jump into a few things that I learned five things that I learned and that if you decide to be a UTA one day hopefully this will help you so let's get started the preparation preparation would probably be the most important the number one top thing on the list. So before each lab, as an undergraduate, you know, just a student, you would have to read up on the materials and procedures, especially like in chemistry or microbiology, so that's what I UTA'd. And you have this huge long list and you have to know each step in order to get to the final product. So as a UTA, you have to actually know it more in detail or more in depth. It helps because you've already had the class before, but just learning at that extra step and being prepared for questions and things of that nature, it really helps to, I guess, know your stuff. So preparation, so read over the material before you go into before you go into lab, if you do teach a lab or a class, make sure you know it back and forth. You can even pro probably try to recite it to yourself a few times by memory because you've read it so much. I honestly strongly uh, urge you to do that because someone in the class is gonna ask you a question and you want to be prepared. You don't want to be caught off guard or have to ask, I don't know, a GTA the answer. Because I would say it makes you look bad, but at least when you go unprepared, you know how to handle those situations and you can get a lot of respect from your fellow students. Fellow students and from the uh, faculty or whoever else is leading the lab. So preparation, definitely key, definitely number one on the list. Um, read over those lab materials before and be prepared for those questions because they will hit you with some crazy ones. Do I flame my loop? So number two on the list would probably, probably be a less obvious one, I guess you could say. So being a UTA for microbiology lab, I would walk around the classroom and critique um, techniques and uh, different aspects of the lab procedure, you know, things like that the students would do and perform in the classroom. And uh, so there's, there's two, two elements, I guess, to this. You have a lot of knowledge as a UTA because you've had the class before and you've studied and prepared. So when I would walk around the classroom, I tried not to, I guess, cr critique everyone every chance that I got. I would basically sit there and watch them and see, okay, well, first off, this guy didn't flame his loot. I would walk over and tell him, hey, if you don't do this, you're going to get contamination. And second would be you're stabbing your when you're streaking your plate, you're stabbing the auger, which is really bad for you know streak for getting that single single colony of bacteria. So I'd walk around and I would say, hey, you know, this is bad, fix it. And or you know try to make improvements. What I would recommend not doing is walking around the classroom and just telling people what to do. So like, oh, streak this, or oh, don't do it this way, don't do it this way, you need to do it this way. Give the student a chance to learn it for themselves, because if they don't have, if they don't make that mistake themselves, and you're there holding their hand, it's not going to be a very productive learning environment. So number two, I guess, would be giving leeway to the students and correcting them when they need correcting. Trust me, you'll just know when the students really, really, I guess, need need help, because they'll ask you. So number three, number three would be going to get asked a lot of questions. So like I said, number one, be prepared. But there's also a time when, uh, for instance, I have one student who asked me questions non-stop all the time about some of the easiest stuff that they could have read in the lab procedure or just common knowledge. But they asked me over and over and over again. So what I did was I would give them advice. I gave them advice the first few times they asked me, of course, because I was eager to answer their questions. But after a while, I saw a pattern. So what I did was 
in the future when they would ask me a question, um, I would just basically look at them and say, did you read the book? Did you read the lab book? And they would probably, most, they said no. And I would say, read your book. I'm not going to help you if you're not going to help yourself. And uh, you have to hate being that way. You know, most TAs hate being that blunt. But I think it's very paramount, very um, important to have that aspect because if you hold their hand, like I said, number number two, if you hold their hand, they're not going to learn anything. So know when to um, when to help and when not to help. So, yeah, that's number three. Number four, your attitude is very very important. So when you go into the lab or when you start being a TA or a UTA, a UTA, what have you, you need to have a good attitude about the class. You don't want to go in just kind of. Oh, I'm here to just get these credit hours out of the way or oh, I'm just here just because. You need to go in, have a good attitude about everything you do because it, it helps shape the class into a fun learning environment to where people can you know, ask you things and where they can you know, grow and blossom as a student and you as a TA, you could, it's, it's a good enriching environment if, if you go in having a great attitude about the class and don't be negative. Number five, last but not least, remembering that we're only human. You're not going to know the answer to every single question. You're going to make mistakes, but the key here is to improve on that. So you're going to be asked that one question from that one student that's just going to be so off the wall and in left field that you're just going to have no idea how to respond to it. And to me, the best answer to something like that would be, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. To me, that is going to be your, like your number one line, your go-to punch. I don't know. I'll get back to you. But you got to remember that this is a time to where you, if you don't know something, or if you feel like something is not going in the direction that you want it to, build on that. Reflect on that. That way, when you go in next time into lab, you'll have something there. You know, you'll have those building blocks, and you'll have that knowledge that you prepared on that. If you get asked another random question, you might be able to answer it, or at least come close. So number five, you're going to make mistakes, but just remember, you can always improve on it, you can always get better. So, thanks for watching everyone, those are my five okay tips for being in UTA. Um, if you want to see weekly content from me, um, biology related stuff, um, or things I've been doing in the lab, hit the subscribe button down here. And uh, again, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, hope everybody has a great day.